Hello and welcome to Talk with Pro. Um, very happy to introduce to a good friend of my, mine, Andrew Ajas Mascot from Malta. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Sam. How are you? I'm very, very How good indeed. And uh, we've known each other for uh, four or five years already. And Andrew is yeah. the General Mediterranean. He's the Secretary General for the Mediterranean Tourism Foundation. And okay. in today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, the MTF, as I, we call it in the shortening. So uh, uh, could you share with us uh, a little bit about the vision and mission of the MT MTF as you are one of the co-founders? Yeah, first of all, thank you for hosting me, Sam, on your, on your show. Um, um, and it's always a pleasure for me to share how, how it all started. Uh, actually, apart from being the Secretary General, I'm, I'm the co-founder of the Mediterranean Tourism Foundation, together with Tony Zara, another friend of yours who you know from Malta, one of the, I would say, leading businessmen in Malta, uh, but also, I would say, a visionary. And it, it, this takes us back to about 10 years ago, um, uh, when I started some ventures here with the Malta Hotels and Restaurants Association, which is the main association for uh, hoteliers. Um, um, and uh, when this brought me to meetings in the European Union institutions, you know, because of course, apart from uh, being an association which lobbies uh, the national the national authorities, we also have the obligation we have uh, to lobby the European Union institutions because it's from there where many of the laws are enacted uh, and influence our members. Um, I could immediately sense, I could immediately see that the Mediterranean countries, when it comes to tourism, do not really collaborate amongst themselves. And I coined this phenomenon because I was, see, I, I, I thought it was very ironic, given that the Mediterranean region attracts one third of international tourism. It's the most important uh, region when it comes to tourism in the world. Um, and I coined this phenomenon as the Eurovision syndrome, <laughs> as you, you well know, Sam, uh, in, at the Eurovision, the Scandinavian countries, the Nordic countries, block vote to each other. Yes. Uh, the Central Eastern countries of Europe block vote each other. But once come, when it comes to the Mediterranean, the French don't vote to the Italians, the <laughs> Italians don't vote to the Maltese. So it's a bit of a mess here. And yes. it's, it's the same thing when it comes to tourism. Um, uh, so this got me thinking. And the more I thought about it, the more I, I started to, to get convinced that something needs to be done about this. Um, in particular, that given that as I was thinking about this and I was watching the news in the evening, I started to see that the Mediterranean is mentioned in the news every day. But unfortunately, for the wrong reasons. Unfortunately, the news, the media coverage, cover um, the, the people drowning in the sea, immigration, uh, terrorist attacks, um, uh, economic crisis in the Mediterranean. So, unfortunately, the Mediterranean usually hits the headlines for the wrong reasons. Uh, when, at the same time, on the other side of the coin, the people, a good majority of the people, are seeking to spend their vacations in our countries. So. I said, this is, some, this is my call. This is my mission in life. Let me do something about it. And that's where I started to organize the first one, a uh, first conference. Um, I spent the annual general meeting of the Malta Hotels and Restaurants Association into a Mediterranean tourism forum. And it's there where it all started. Um, by bringing people together, by bringing people who are not directly related to the tourism sector, not just hoteliers and restauranters, but anybody who has an interest in Mediterranean tourism. And this includes developers, IT experts, um, uh, people coming from the um, security business, anybody, furniture business, uniforms, anybody. Because if you think about it, tourism is a sector which involves everybody even in terms of human resources, qualified people, less qualified people, it brings everybody together. And it was an immediate success. And to cut a very long story short, it eventually grew so quickly 
getting to know people, even like yourself, as you rightly mentioned, about six years ago, five years ago, we got to know each other. And um, we started literally to create a new family, an international family, people coming from all over the world, all trying to give their part, but also learn from each other. Uh, and as you all know, the latest, the last um, forum, which we held, has now grew so much that we had about more than 1,500 people coming from 35 different countries. And this is what is amazing about this project. 35 different countries. People coming from Ecuador, Peru, New York, um, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, uh, China, India, um, uh, Finland, Sweden, Ghana, uh, Germany, Ghana, the king of Ghana came here, the king of the Ashantis was here last year with an entourage of 50 people coming along from Ghana. <laughs> and what is more amazing is that he pledged to clone the Mediterranean Tourism Foundation into the West Africa Tourism Foundation, something which hopefully we will be able to launch later on this year. Uh, this year we also had the princess, uh, Dana Firas of Jordan, who is also the governor of Petra, the famous Petra archaeological site. Um, um, and we also had a letter uh, written to us of encouragement and support by Pope Francis himself from the Vatican. Um, um, because when I was explaining to his ambassador our vision that to promote tourism as a vehicle for peace and stability across the Mediterranean region, this was something which attracted the attention of His Holiness. And two weeks later, the meeting we received a beautiful letter which was read during our summit uh, early on, earlier on this year. So, um, uh, the, 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 what's the trick? What's the spirit? What's the, what's the reason why this project is growing so much? First of all, I think it's passion. Um, uh, it's the passion is, the, is, the, is that in this project, all the people who are involved directly or indirectly have this charisma to give, to bring people together, to get to know new cultures. We're not afraid of diversity. Rather, we are happy that, uh, that, that we believe that uh, diversity is the beauty um, in, in our world. Um, um, and, um, and also, um, it's a question also of creating new projects together. Um, so relevant to the people, relevant to the businessmen, we're not ashamed, we're not embarrassed to say that we do projects also to earn money. Um, because money is, a, is an important also variable in the whole formula. Yes. So bringing people with ideas, with the resources, uh, with, uh, with, 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 with opportunities, bring them together in the same forum and create projects. And of projects, of course, we are working on different initiatives. We have uh, worked on a project um, about uh, energy efficiency for hotels. Um, uh, so we developed an app um, uh, which was distributed and is currently being distributed to hoteliers in Malta to compare, to manage, to better manage their consumption levels, their energy consumption levels, but more importantly, even to share uh, key performance, the results of key performance indicators uh, against uh, for benchmarking purposes against other similar hotels in their category to learn uh, from best practices from each other and adapt to each other. I understand, Andrew, that you also have uh, uh, connected with uh, 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 music and uh, are doing yeah. some sort of events relating to the Mediterranean uh, music or orchestra. Could you share with us uh, yeah. uh, what is the idea and who you are working with? So music is the international language, right? Everybody agrees about this. We've done something about it. Um, um, throughout history, Mediterranean identity has been very, very strong. Unfortunately, uh, in the last, in the recent years, um, uh, the identity of the Mediterranean has sort of um, drained out. Uh, and we all became Europeans or Africans. Now, our aim as the foundation, want to bring, we want to rekindle back this identity this strong identity of the Mediterranean. And we believe that music can really help achieve this goal. 
I mean, just think about it, Sam. Um, uh, Bob Marley, it's Jamaica. Uh, the Beatles, UK. Elvis, America. Music helps to build, to build identity. Yeah. So, it never happened ever before. We have set Malta as the stage for the top pop stars of the Mediterranean. Our aim is that on the 4th of October, in collaboration with Radio Italian, the, the leading radio station in Italy, we will bring in together a lineup of about 15 top pop stars coming from Italy, Egypt, um, uh, Algeria, Tunisia, um, uh, Greece, and Malta. Now, anyone who is wanted to come and uh, join this uh, uh, event, how can they find out that, about tickets and everything like that? It's, it's a, first of all, it's something which is it's it's a concert which is for free, um, and it's going to be on a Friday, fourth of October. What is interesting is on the fifth of October, there's going to be another beautiful event called Valletta Notte Bianca, when Valletta, our capital city, will open doors. All the museums, all the palaces in Valletta will open doors for free for the general public. There will be a lot of music, a lot of food. So a weekend of events, starting with Friday with the concert, Saturday, uh, Notte Bianca in Valletta, and Friday, of course, um, you can go back home. Um, uh, so information about this is on uh, medstarsfestival.com. I will put that in the comments. So uh, I will put that in the comments and then that way everyone who is listening, who are on, on watching live and who is watching uh, after the show, we'll have a chance to visit that website and then uh, get some more information because th this is the event not to be missed. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's for free. However, you need to download tickets to, um, uh, to ensure that there will be a reserved place. We're expecting about 20,000 people <laughs> for this event. Um, uh, it's amazing. It's exciting. Yes. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I mean, I hope we manage to transmit this excitement to all those who are following us. Well, you certainly, I got my goosebumps up here already. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. Now, uh, uh, you're, you're a visionary. You have a very large vision for the Mediterranean uh, through what you've been working on. Anything else you'd like to share uh, about the future? Because it's not only about Malta. Malta is a small island. We're talking about the whole all the countries which are surrounded by Malta, uh, how, how this could affect them? Yeah, um, uh, Malta is the stage. It's, it's, the, it's doing its role. It's, it's a stage in the middle of the Mediterranean. It's the meeting place. Um, however, as you rightly mentioned, it's not just about Malta. Um, uh, we have, uh, we're working on a project about uh, faith-based tourism with Fatima, the Vatican, Assisi, Bethlehem, creating uh, the Mediterranean Christmas portal, um, the Marian route in, in, in the Mediterranean, creating opportunities for people to get together and work together, respective of religion, um, uh, culture, you know, bringing them together because we are all, all at the end of the day, Mediterranean too. Very good. Uh, by the way, there is uh, Hakan Eren uh, in, uh, uh, from Tur Turkey. I know we see in Cyprus, he's saying hello. Hakan. Hakan, yes. <laughs> hello. Yeah, hello, Hakan. Thank you very much for joining. And please share this uh, broadcast to your friends also and give us a thumbs up. We would like to get some uh, social endorsement on this show. <laughs> yes, Hakan is a great friend. Yes. He's one of us. Very good. Very good. Now, these are very exciting news uh, that you have been, been sharing. And I think uh, uh, I, I love to do some future shows relating to as we get closer to to the event in October and also to kind of uh, uh, get them uh, further awareness. Uh, the audience who is watching this show are all the way from US uh, to uh, uh, Southeast Asia. So they're worldwide uh, people watching. And uh, so I think it would be nice for them to have an opportunity to experience uh, a, a great place like uh, Malta and particularly Valletta and uh, uh, and and these events that you are been with your team has been staging. I think this would be. Uh, there's also so many events going on in in Malta throughout the year. The Baroque festivals, etc. So many things going on. So it's something that so. uh, uh, that uh, once you get the taste of it, uh, I think you will come back. Hopefully, you're always welcome. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. 
Well, uh, I'd like to thank you. We had uh, have had a great chat here for about 16 minutes. And I think uh, uh, knowing from the experience, people are enjoying hearing what you have to say. But many of who couldn't join the live show will definitely uh, watch it later on. And any comments that I, I get from them, I will obviously uh, give you some feedback and with any questions that we have. Thank you so much, Sam Eric. Well, thank you very much for joining today. And uh, I hope you have a good evening. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.